Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Mm-hmm. All right, let me get the phone number out. 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. How are you, Doc? Thank you, sir. I'm fine. You want to punch the mic? Get it over with? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, good. My shoulder. There we go. Ah, I feel much better. Go. I feel much better. You want me to lube it up so and, you can put uh, it somewhere? No, it's all right. Thank you. But uh, I had trouble uh, containing impulse tonight. I brought you a gift. Oh, yes, Dr. Yeah. Drew. <laughs> yes, you know, on his salary, being a big-time radio guy and a uh, board-certified physician, and uh, that does come with some money, <laughs> he splurged and bought me a 16-ouncer of Clamato. Oh. It's a zesty and light-tasting tomato cocktail made from concentrate. Oh, oh yeah. Let me see oh. what's in this state. Because people do not believe Clamato exists. They do not believe that a company would be stupid enough yeah. to combine tomato juice and clam juice and call it a beverage. I, I, I really, I, I was sitting there, it was crying out to me. I had to, had to have it. Never seen it before. Where do you see beef motto? Oh. <laughs> Uh, it has yeah. water, corn syrup, concentrated uh, tomato juice, monosodium glutamate. Well, you got to get a certain amount of that each day or your levels will go down. Salt, citric acid, celery powder, still have not got to the clam part. Onion powder, garlic powder, spices, dried clam broth. Uh. <laughs> Red dye number 40 <laughs> and vinegar. Uh. Well, just the way nature meant it. <laughs> well, you know, Drew. We have David Spade in here tomorrow night. Yes, we do. So that should be fun from and, uh, Saturday Night Live. And, and bribed and him of, in. And who? And bribed him in. Oh, yes. Uh, he wanted some uh, tickets to the local weenie roast, and uh, Anne uh, threw her uh, weight around, and I mean that figuratively, Anne, not literally, and uh, bent him over a barrel and said, well, you must come in and entertain. You must dance for your food here. This is big time radio. So David Spade tomorrow night, corn the following night, and then my... Um, Gushy homo love buddies, Goldfinger. So uh, a big night. And tonight, uh, Dish Walla will be in here in just a few minutes. So it's action-packed, Big Drew. week. Big week. All right, you ready to get to the phone? I am ready. Oh, wait a minute. I want to say something real fast. Uh-huh. I was talking to you about this before the show started. The little article in the uh, broadcast and cable, uh, it basically, it's an industry rag. And see if you can find that around here. It's it's one of these rags that... that People that are in the industry, it's what you, like, if you go to a really cheesy uh, agent's office, is what would be sitting around on the table at a place like that. And they did a little piece, doctors in the radio. And they had uh, Dr. Dina Dell and Dr. Uh, Judy or Dr. whoever, Dr. Laura. And uh, my good friend Dr. Drew also had a piece in it. And uh, I was mentioned, I was mentioned as Drew's sidekick, (laughs) his sidekick. Is sort of the uh, the Cato oh. of of radio. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little sidekick. I was described as an aspiring stand up comedian. So as soon as I can get that uh, open mic gig worked out at Rooster Tea Feathers, I'll be down there. Something to aspire to, Adam. Idiots. Why can't those idiots just get things right? Yeah. She sat here and watched us do a whole show. Yes. She saw that I hosted the show. Yes. Why couldn't she have called me the host yeah. and just called you the doctors? Is that the mean? Your doctor title at no, all, calling no. me a host? No, not Do at all. I take away from it? Do I strip you of your Hippocratic oath no. because I'm called a host? No, just the way you treat me, but not, no, not just because you're called a host. Sidekick. Yeah, I like that. All right, so uh, broadcast and cable publication can kiss my ass. All right, we got that out of the way. John, 17, you're on Loveline. That's me, man. Hey. Hey. My full name's John Holmes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Well, we're out. We're out and running tonight, aren't we, Doc? Fred, twenty-six. You're on Love Line. Oh, uh, hello, guys. Hey. Okay. Um, problem here is, um, I met a woman the other night at a bar, and uh, I went home to go engage in some sexual activity with her, and uh, I think she slipped something in my drink because, twenty minutes into intercourse with her, I started having this really weird feeling. Uh huh. I felt like I was seeing all kinds of, you know, colors and stuff. No, basically, I felt like I was tripping. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I've tripped on acid before. Mm-hmm. So, and then you know, the sex was very, very intense, and she was laughing at me, and it was freaking me out, you know. And and then I lost my erection, and she was laughing at me, uh-huh. and just all kinds of weird stuff was happening. Mm-hmm. Right. 
and it lasted for like 10 to 12 hours. Mm. And once it wore off, you know, I went home and I, I just couldn't sleep. I mm. basically I couldn't sleep for two days. Wow. And now, no matter how hard, how I, no matter how hard I try, I cannot get an erection at all. Mm. So I'm just wondering what you guys think that could be. Well, I, I mean, all I know now is that you're so anxious that you weren't able to get an erection. I mean, that that's oh, that's that. Uh, yeah, I, I can't describe it. I've I've done all kinds of you know things to the you know to accept myself. You know. No, no. Listen. So let's go back to the. the... <laughs> Let's go back to the the experience yet. Were you actually having visual hallucinations? Yes, I was. What were you seeing? Uh, Big all fat chick. Colors and and it felt like you know her the, the sheets and the blankets were trying to fold up and get me. Uh-huh. Her roof was caving in, uh-huh. and she was laughing at me, which was freaking me out even more. Did you ask her if she put something in the drink or gave you something? I I, I said I think you put something in this drink, and all she was doing was she kept laughing at me, and you know. And then, then you know she basically had no more use for me once my erection gone down. She threw me out. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. What a weird story. <laughs> That's good. You still have uh, both your lungs? I'm lucky that I do right now. Oh, yeah. And, Kidneys? Oh, man, my penis afterwards felt, oh, man, it felt like a piece of raw meat. All right. I can't All describe right. it. Right. Fred, Fred, do you know where she lives? Yes, I do. Do you have her phone number? Oh, uh, no, I don't. I met her in a bar, but I'm fixing to get even with her. And oh. I just want to know if you guys have any suggestions of what I should do. No, no. no I, I would not suggest you get even at all. I mean, this person is a criminal and is going to be, you know. Tr- well, what so. should he do? Now, wait a minute. I now. can't let her get away with this. I gotta, she has to get her come up in some way. Yeah, well, hold on. I, I think uh, just seeing you nude was her comeuppance, uh, Fred. But, but let me say this, Drew. Yeah. If Fred was named uh, Frederica. Mm-hmm. And it was a female who called in. Yeah, you'd say, you'd say and, call the police. And spun this kind of yarn. Right, right, you I, would be all, oh, you no, would be no, outraged. No, 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 oh, the indignity in no, your voice. No, I, I was going to be getting to the suggestion that he consider calling the police. Because I said, like, I said already, if she's a criminal, you don't want to go out there and reinitiate any kind of relationship with this person. Yeah, but if I call the police, how do I prove that she did this? Well, at least you can talk to the police about what kind of action is available to you legally. Whereby you can maybe get some justice out of this. I don't know. Oh, I don't really want to get the police involved. I got a warrant out for my arrest, and I just might incriminate myself. Beautiful. But I was more messed up than Gary Coleman on a lithium flashback that night. All right. <laughs> All right, Freddy. Mm. Fred seemed a little too well rehearsed, yeah, yeah. as if he told that story yeah. one too many times. Yeah. Didn't it, Drew? You smell the uh, bogosity there? Yeah. The screeners are... Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Deb, don't take it out on the not, screeners. No, no, group. they've got to keep their guard up tonight. So oh. Obviously, they're out there. Okay, don't backpedal. Jenny, 19. Hi. Hey. Um, I have a little problem. We're ready. Okay, I am a, I just finished my freshman year in college, and I have a male roommate who happens to be my boyfriend's friend. And one night, we got drunk, and we had sex. And then the next day we forgot all about it. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. You know, we just pretended like it didn't happen. And I didn't want my boyfriend to know about it. And he said, he, you know, he didn't want to, you know, lose his friendship with him. And then, like, maybe last month, or, like, the last day of school, there was, like, a big kegger. But we weren't drunk and we had sex again. Yeah. And but just the idea that there's a keg nearby was enough to I, loosen you up? I guess. I guess. I don't know. All right. So you weren't loaded the the second time around? Yeah. All right. So you... And, you now I'm late by about 10 days because uh. we had unprotected sex the second time. Oh, yeah. Good. There's a plan. <laughs> oh, that's just good sound. Uh, that's pragmatism, Drew. That's all that is. Mm, good planning. Jenny. Yeah. What do you, you, you're just not satisfied, are you? You just got to keep going until you get busted, don't you? Yeah. You want your boyfriend to know, obviously. I, yes. I don't. Oh. Yes, you do. There is a big part of you, actually a smaller, uh, hairier part, that does not care whether he finds out or not. I don't want him to find out. But, but, I... but your actions say you do. You wouldn't have done it a second time sober with no protection. And you would have done it a third time if you didn't find out you're probably pregnant. Yeah, probably. All right. I mean, it sounds like you want to have a relationship with this other guy. I do. I want to have a relationship with both of them. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. That's what do you mean? She does. No, she doesn't. She just doesn't want to end the, the one with her present boyfriend. She's still, afraid to do that. She I wants mean, to have him like, with the new guy. He was like my high school boyfriend. See, you know, my high see. School boyfriend. All right. Yes. All right. Here, here's what people do. They don't have 
the uh, cojones, to, the guts to end a relationship like a man, and I hate to use two male references with a female, but it's all that came to mind, they cannot go and look the person in the eye and end the relationship, so instead they just do something that will end the relationship. It's like not being able to quit a job, so you just get caught stealing a copier. Yeah. Right. You want it out. You need to get out. I mean, I know it's it's very hard for you to conceive of being without your, your first love, you're very, I'm sure, concerned about how it's going to affect him, but you've already affected him in, in very significant ways with through your actions, and you need to get out of this before you really hurt him. You need to bring this thing to a close for both of your sake. Jenny. Yeah. What are you going to do with the spawn? I do not know. Mm-hmm. Does this guy want to hang out and raise uh, a child? I haven't talked to him about it, but he wants me to dump my boyfriend that I have right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he wants to stick around if he finds out I'm pregnant. <sighs> I mean, I haven't talked to him since 10 days. I've been avoiding him. All right. Jenny. Yeah. Why don't you let me talk to him? Okay. You got the guy's... Well, wait a minute. You don't need his phone number. You live with the guy. Yeah. Where is he? He's at a kegger. <laughs> He's at a kegger. Yeah. Let me uh, just venture a guess as, as to what this guy may be doing at this kegger. Um, Drew, you stop me when you think I get to the right answer. Uh, breaking off in an individual uh, Bible discussion group? <laughs> no. No? No. No. Okay. Should I continue? Yes, continue. I'll tell you when to stop. Um, reading the um, Torah with some of the young uh, Jewish students from the... Uh, from the, um, from the <laughs> From the menorah house. No? I'll stop you. No, all now. right. Uh, getting loaded and trying to uh, spread his seed onto an unsuspecting uh, high school chick who snuck into the caker. You get warmer. Uh, telling all his friends he banged Jenny while he's setting his sights on another girl. There you go. All right? All right. Well, we got to it, Jenny. I don't... If he, he really wanted a relationship with me. And I don't think that he would do that. I mean, he's not, he doesn't really sleep around with anyone. All right, Jenny, wait till he comes home tonight. Okay. Make sure he's alone. Okay. Tell him you're pregnant. Okay. All right. Okay. And then we, you will separate the uh, men from the boys. Drew, not bad for just a little sidekick. <laughs> as soon as I get my stand-up gig going, I'm out of here. <laughs> Gina, 24. Hi, I have a quick question. My boyfriend, he's just turned 27, is, I believe, a virgin. I am not, and it's been nine months into the relationship, and no discussion regarding sex has occurred as of yet. And I've gone um, sort of being around the bush, but nothing exactly direct, and I can't seem to approach the subject and want to know quite how. Mm hmm How much experience do you have? I've had four partners. Mm hmm And... All in serious relationships. How, yes, yes, you're not loose. How long, uh, I should say, how far have you guys gotten in your uh, physical crazy. relationship? Crazy is hardly anything. I mean, um, just beyond kissing, hardly anything. Mm. And you know he's a virgin because he told you? No, I'm guessing. Because he's not had a serious relationship. Well, you guys got a real communication problem, Gina. How do I even broach the subject? How do I, and I, because I've talked about the communication problem. I've talked about, or obviously one way, communication problem. Nine months you guys have been going out. Mm -hmm. Dating, yeah. Uh-huh. And and you're you're dying for some. The first four months I was getting over somebody else, so I wasn't even, even focusing a lot on him. And then all of a sudden I'm realizing, wow, I'm involved, in, involved with somebody, and yet nothing... Suddenly when I'm finally going, oh, well, I guess I do kind of want a relationship here, then nothing is, has has happened. Is he a good-looking guy? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I don't think he's like a nerd that has never, but I don't think he's very open, obviously, with, with girls in general. I think I'm definitely the first. Is he a religious guy? He's um, Catholic background, but I don't know. He's not church-going every day, yet comes from a very strong Catholic background. So you're yearning for sex. <laughs> Something. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you what, Gina. Let me be the brocher. Okay. And I be him? No, no. He'll be him. I'll be me. Drew will be my bitch. <laughs> and we will we will broach. We will broach together. You'll be here. Believe me, I will not embarrass you, Gina. Okay. All right? We're going to put you on hold. 
Okay. We're going to get this guy's phone number. No. And I will be the broacher. I can't do it. Absolutely. I can't. I cannot. Do, first of all, he's probably in bed. Second, because he works early. Second of all, I it would just it would mortify him. That that's why I'm embarrassed even bringing it up with him, even though I've tried in many ways. Gina. I I cannot have I cannot have a third party. Never mind. Gina, do you want another? Uh, I love my sidekick. <laughs> Gina, do you want another nine months of taking a three-hour baths with no, your legs akimbo? Uh, just two questions. If the girl was a virgin, if you were, if you were supposedly a virgin, um, and you know, try to pretend on a saddle. If you were a virgin, <laughs> hold on. How would how would you want to be approached? From the front. <laughs> anyway, if I was a virgin at, at twenty-seven, I'd I'd want to be approached for uh, if it was for free, I'd take it. But see, that's the thing. Is I also I don't think he's gay. I don't get that vibe off of him that he's gay. And I'm thinking that honestly has occurred to me. But I don't get that. But yet I. All right, don't... but what happens, Gina? You're making out with the guy, and you're you're getting hot and heavy. And he and he doesn't he doesn't proceed anything further. And I am. Okay, Gina, you want to know what's up with this guy? He has a, a, a syndrome. It's called uh, PS syndrome, penis shame. <laughs> yes, it's very big. He's ashamed of his penis. There's something in his pants he does not want you to see. That's what it is. He could have the uh, Peroni's disease. Again, I'm just a sidekick, so you tell me if I get out of line here, Drew. Just listening. Where it uh, bends toward Mecca, right? Yeah. He could have an incredibly small penis. He could have some kind of a bizarre uh, birthmark in the uh, shape of uh, Queen Elizabeth. So if it's in the dark, what's, I mean, what's the big deal? Well, that could be the problem. Gina, here's what you're going to have to do. Usually I reserve this kind of advice for men, but you got to give him, give him a few beers. Does he have a drink he likes? Mm-hmm. All right. Make it for him. I'm guessing it's kind of a foo-foo drink? No, J.D. Cone. Okay. A little bit of a foo-foo drink, but okay. Give him a few of those. Get him a little loaded. Put on a little Isaac Hayes. Get him loosened up and just go in for the kill. Don't take no for an answer. Okay. Gina, that's what he needs. You're doing him a favor. You understand? <laughs> speak to me. At least I've done him a favor. It's going to be like a uh, sexual intervention. You get all the friends of the penis together in the living room. <laughs> what is that? Oh, all right. All right. So uh, anyway, Gina, call us back and tell us what happened. I, I gotta, I gotta know how this one ends up, Katie. This is probably the oldest person that has ever called you, but I'm calling to flirt with you. Yes, the sidekick, Adam Carolla. Pardon me? All right, you're loaded, Katie? Do I sound like it? Uh, a no. little bit. No. All right, how old are you? Well, how old are you? <laughs> okay, baby, listen. I'm it's a, to flirt with you. It's a two-hour show. Am well, I too old for you? We're not at a red onion. We're, I don't got all the time in the world. Okay, okay, I'm an older lady. You're 50, 50, you're 50, 50-ish. 50-ish? Yeah. All right. And I, I've been listening to your show. Mm -hmm. and I think you guys are great fun and adorable. You're both adorable, even the guy with three babies. <laughs> Big fan, I see, yes. Yeah, I am. You, two, you know, two of those kids are his. Katie. And one was the milkman. You're 51. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How are you holding together? Well, I, I don't think I'm doing too well. I'm listening to these teenagers do things I never did, and... um and now I've got to get out in the world and do the things they're doing now. And I feel like I don't want to do high school and college. Mm hmm. Is uh, menopause set in yet? Yeah, it did. Uh huh. So you can't get like pregnant. Very early. Yeah. Right. I mean, I can be a lot. I've had escapades. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> and uh, anything dragging or is, is all okay? What is that? What is that? Oh, my butt drags a little. Yeah, butt drags a mean? little. That's my all right. Big fat pig. <laughs> so. No, no, Kate, I would never, never imply that. Well, you know, I'm not exercising, but I could. All right, I just kind of get down and out because I feel kind of mm, kind of lost and lonely. Like, mm. you know, I've done the mother thing. My kids are grown and raised. Mm -hmm. I'm young. I'm fun. Where's their father? Uh, they have a father and a stepfather. Uh-huh. Where are they? That I have been, I've had two divorces. Mm. Okay. Now it's time to meet someone new, but I, I'm uncomfortable with the single scene that the bar scene, I get in trouble when I go to the bars. What happens? I meet younger men all the time. Yeah, what happens? But they want sex. Yeah, well, that's what you want, isn't it? Well, she wants a relationship, Adam. I, well, first I, you yeah, have the sex, then knows, you talk. The guy with the three kids knows I want a relationship. Katie, yeah. you need to go to some places where you're going to find men uh, a little, little more seasoned. Uh, right, with money and a bank account. Right, right. 
Well, like, okay. uh, I'm a middle of the rotor. I don't, you know, I come from Mormon land. Uh-huh. And I can't right. quite go for the big moles. And I really don't like... All right. Um, Listen, here's where I, I suggest you, you look for a man. You got the library. I'm looking for you. Ski hills. Where? The ski library. Hills. The ski the hills? She's, no. she's, she's looking for some Mormon countries and maybe some Utah. I've got... This book right here, I've been over to Barnes and Nobles, and I've got God, a biography. It's a good right. book. I'm going to read that book, as a matter of fact. All right, Katie. Yeah. Yes. Katie, enough about your own personal schedule. Go yeah. to one of those two stepper things, you know, or go to bingo night, or possibly even the morgue. <laughs> so I found that boring. You're not helping her. No, uh, there's Katie. There's part of me that is very boring, but there's part of me that's lively and fun. I want a middle of the road kind of guy. Where are they? Well, they're in the middle of the road. What the hell do I know where... where Roadkill. Road where do kill. I know where older guys hang out? I don't want older. <laughs> Listen, I want somebody that has a bank account. She wants you, Adam, for crying out loud. She called to get you. Yeah, Katie, I you want... with you, and you're just... You're, just, uh, you're, you're being a real jerk to her. I'm embarrassed. How old is Adam? He's old enough. 32. No. Yes. Yes? Yes. Katie. Hey, I've been with younger. All right, all right. Katie, yes. Listen. Don't don't embarrass your kids by sexing down the younger guys. Oh, could you imagine the, the humanity? My kids don't know what I do. All right, listen, Katie. Yeah. Go to a place where people uh, a little closer to your age would hang out and find yourself a ni nice one and don't jump into the sack with them in the first ten minutes. All right? You're not kidding. <laughs> that was retarded. All right, we're going to be back with Dishwalla. Hey, this is Iggy Pop, and you're listening to Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Yes, you is. Where the hell's Scott? All right, I'll explain that statement later. 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. We are here with Dishwalla. That would be J.R. Richards, Scott... Oops, sorry. Rodney Browning and Scott Alexander. Now, Scott has uh, mysteriously disappeared. He got swallowed up in the studios or something. Oh, I mean, you guys just have... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here, you, you found the Coke machine, the candy well, bar machine. I guess, yeah. All right. You guys make love to the same mic because uh, someone's going to have to double up on a mic. And you guys... uh you should make Scott double up. ...seem to do that naturally. Yeah, that's, you know, that's well, what we're about. Well, either way, Rodney, you're doubling up with somebody, unfortunately, because you're in the middle. Well, that makes me happy. All right. So let's talk about this uh, dishwalla. You guys are from uh, Santa Barbara. That is a fact. And uh, I'm sure you get tired of the same old stupid questions, but uh, I'm going to ask, uh, where'd you get the name for the band? Take it, JR. It's your uh, turn. Name of the band. We actually, it comes from India. There are people in India who um, sell saddle. Well, actually, they were started out, they were cable. What is the, that? Don't mind that. It's Dr. Drew who doesn't have the sense to put the thing on hum when he comes into the studio, but that's okay. Continue. Uh, no problem. Um, yeah, there are people who uh, who are like satellite TV hackers. They go into villages in, in India and set up a satellite dish and sell cable TV to anybody who wanted to buy it. I think now I think it's legal, but the people who were doing it were called Dishwallas. And uh, that's very fashionable so, now to have. So you mean TV. like they can uh, masturbate to Baywatch too? Exactly. We've got Beavis and Butthead and CNN and probably Western, quite a... Western culture. Can you imagine what that's... Best. What is that doing to their minds? <laughs> I could only imagine what... How it's actually... Is. It's scary to think about. I mean, the whole Westernization. Because um, imagine what that's doing to you when you're sitting on a hut with a dirt floor and you're watching a Falcon Crest or Dynasty reruns. Uh. And, you know, everyone's driving around in a Bentley and living in a 40-room mansion. That would, and, do, that would do strange things to your head. And there's, oh, and oh, God, what, imagine this. If you didn't have enough to eat and, uh, you're, you're watching like, uh, Robin Leach, uh, pound down, you know, half uh, a, a side of beef or something. I mean, wouldn't that. Or Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These kids come home to like their dirt huts. Want a pair of Nikes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're starving and there's Gallagher smashing produce with an oversized sledgehammer. <laughs> whole value system completely out of control. All right, so you guys are uh, from the uh, lovely Santa Barbara area, mm -hmm. and we're on up there on KJEE. -E. E -E. Yes, indeed. Have you been to their lovely studios? Yes, we have. It's a guy's apartment, isn't it? <laughs> 
Pretty much, yeah. But it's comfortable. It's yes, upstairs it from the greatest thrift store there is in Santa Barbara. So. Oh, really? Is mm. Yeah, because I went down there and visited those guys, and there was a, a crazy woman waiting for me when I got down the stairs. Which one? She was. Uh, They're all famous in Santa Barbara. So big as a house and toothless, and uh, I think she got some sort of a uh, frequent buyer's discount over at that particular thrift store. No, is it the one with the mustache? Oh, they all have mustaches, <laughs> except for out. the guys. Jasper out. No, but I did her there in the parking lot. Um, you know, it's, how was she? Some of the perks of being a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you guys did, you, gr- did you grow up in Santa Barbara? Or did you uh, all did, go yeah. to school out there? Um. <laughs> We grew up and went to school there. Little Leach. And that seems like a relatively sane place to grow up. I mean, it, it's just real laid back and people are real nice. It's really mellow. Yeah, and it, it just, you know, you got that, that ocean breeze blowing through there and there's like enough to do if you want to find something to do. You can go into Isla Vista or do that whole college thing or something like that. But it just We avoid like IV good... like the plague. Oh, you do? Especially during Halloween. Really? You heard about Halloween and Ivy? Oh, I, I took, um, I went there in like 1984. I took, um, ecstasy and met my old girlfriend there. So I know all about it. Okay. Yeah, they block off. So the is it streets. true about sex on X? Uh, I don't know. I didn't get any for like nine months into the relationship. I'm sorry. But I sure <laughs> sell masturbate that night. It was the best I ever had myself. <laughs> all right. We're going to talk a little more about the Shwala and their, uh, their uh, new CD, Pet Your Friends. We're going to hear something from their new CD, but first we're going to get to the phones. Karen, 18, you're on Loveline with Dishwalla. Hi, I um, have a small problem. <laughs> um, I'm 18 years old, and I have I like this guy who's about 32. And um, Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, I don't really think nothing's wrong with it, but I mean, I don't see what the age, you know, what age matters, but my parents don't really know. My dad sort of found out about it last year sometime, but then we kind of broke up and parted ways, and now we're kind of getting back together again. And um, my dad just kind of laughed at me last year whenever he found out about it because he didn't really think I was serious about it, and he don't really like the guy. He thinks he's all, you know, a mess, and he's really not. But, well, um, it's back to our same concern. What's that? Which is? Uh, Adam and I have a concern about the guy's that are that much older and dating girls that are that much younger. Yeah, it's that they're screwed up. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm 32. This guy's 32. And, and sort of, she sort of proves the point that, Karen, he's not a peer of yours, so it'd be very difficult for you to judge whether you're screwed up or not because you don't know what a 32-year-old is really supposed to be like. What do you, you guys know, you do when you're together besides, uh, you know? We've never um, done anything past um, kissing and maybe a little bit of fondling, but that's, I mean... I mean, I'm a. I'll be. I mean, I'm proud to say it. I'm a virgin, and I'm. Good. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to lose it until I'm married. So, right. and he feels the same way. I mean, actually, he's been married before, so obviously he's not. But, um. Wait, how long have you been going out with him? Well, I liked him last year for, like, we were going out for about three months. That was just during the summer, and then we broke up until about maybe two months ago. And, but I've known him for a long time. All right. How long have you been going out? Just give me a combined total. Um, maybe about seven, eight months. All right. Seven, eight months, and all you've done was kiss, and this guy's 32. Yeah. And, 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 so he's, and he's cool with this. He's not pressuring you to do anything. No. He, in fact, he's, um, he tells me a lot that he would, he'll never. Okay. Now I think the guy's even more whacked out. Is he seeing I, other people? I know that sounds wrong. No, he's not. What? I mean, not that you're not a uh, lovely creature, Karen, but I really, I mean, here's the first thing I think when I think of a 32-year-old guy hooking up with an 18-year-old. I think sex, pure, visceral, butt-slapping, young, fresh, nubile sex. That That's what I think. Actually, I think about that anyway, but that's what I think about, especially when I hear a 32-year-old's going out with an 18-year-old. And then when I hear that you guys have been going out for uh, over half a year and that all you've done is kiss... It makes me think the guy's even more whacked. I mean, doesn't that sound... Um, how old are you guys? Late, I can't 20s. tell you, man. Late late 20s? Late 20s yeah. Uh, you know, it sounds like the guy's either really lonely or just has like some... Has a trouble getting along with people his own age or something? I don't know. Is he immature, that, that Karen? Is, I mean, that is a big no. how could she just? How can she judge that? She's 18. Mm. Well, does he wear a wind-up beanie or anything? Oh, no, he works He doesn't, doesn't skip he... when he when he walks? He works at what? He works for... He's, I mean... Well, well, well there you have it. <laughs> well, okay, he works for a beverage now. company, you know he's... All right, look, be nice now. All right. He, he works for a puppy. He's, he, I mean, he's got a lot of money. He's, I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know what attracted him to me, to be honest. I don't, I, I don't know. I just know that I've got to do something because I turn... I turn 18 next month on the 3rd. Oh, you're still oh. 17. Ooh. Even worse. Oh. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm having a lot of problems at home and stuff, too, and I'm just dying to get out of here as it is. Yeah, I should this, this, the night, now you've sort of laid the groundwork for us to understand what but, this, what's going on here. But, okay. He's, he's a victimizer, really, and for some reason he's able to hold, hold back and not break the law, at least. Me? Uh, yeah, he is. He's oh, he but is. but he's basically he's taking advantage of the situation that you he know at some level he knows that you're you're having trouble at home. But Karen and was just talking about out. taking advantage of the situation by turning eighteen and moving out with him. No, I'm not moving out with him. I just got to get out of here. All right. I mean. All right, Karen. Yeah. You know something's up with a thirty-two-year-old guy's chasing after a seventeen-year-old, don't you? Well, he's not really chasing after me. I mean, he... Mm. All right. He's having a form of a relationship with you, and he's almost twice your age. Yeah. Okay. Something's up with him. You you think it's fine because you're just Karen. But to us, you're some 17-year-old who's going out with a 32-year-old who works for Pepsi. Okay. All right. Something's up with this guy. At least he's not trying to feel you up, but uh, I'm guessing that day will come. Yeah, he's waiting until she turns 18. Yeah. Okay, yep. Well, if it does, then I guess I'll... I mean... I hope that I can, you know, break it off. But but until then, what am I going to do about my dad? I mean... Uh, your dad's right. Listen to him. I mean, I don't know what she wants us to say. Your dad is right. I mean, we, we, no, true. You have a couple of 32-year-old, a uh, couple of 3-year-olds. Yes. <laughs> now, and you have a daughter. Yes. Now, you tell me, which would you be more upset about? Your 17-year-old daughter going out with a 32-year-old or your 32-year-old sons going out with a 17-year-old? I'd be upset about both, frankly, and I, I I would find out what was going on with the sons if they were behaving like that. But I would be really disturbed, right? If it was the former, I'm guessing a little bit more pissed off if it like, was the daughter going out with yeah, the 32 year old. Like that's what inspires heavy feelings. <laughs> Drew made like a shotgun motion when he did that. <laughs> All right, we're going to get back with uh, Dishwalla. We're going to hear something from Dishwalla. Uh, we're going to hear a little more from Drew and his sidekick, Adam Carolla. Phone number here at Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew's little sidekick and yes. aspiring stand-up comedian. That's, that's the most accurate and the artistic As description I've ever heard of you. Chronicled in that uh, rag, uh, what was that? Want to be dominated. Broadcasting cable. <sighs> Yeah, anyway. And did you uh, find that? All right, we can't live, uh, we cannot live in the past. We have Dishwalla here. We have J.R. Richards and Hello. Rodney Browning, both from Dishwalla. And, uh, they have some, uh, dates coming up. Uh, June 11th and 12th, they are playing at the Troubadour. It is sold out, but, um, if you're smart and you know people. Show up naked, you might get in for it. You're willing to put out a little. I was about to say that. You might be able to get some tickets. Also, <laughs> uh, June 16th, they will be in San Diego at the 91X Sunfest. Uh, also then going out on tour with the Goo Goo Dolls, July 1st, Washington, D.C. at the 930 Club. July 7th, they will be in Chicago at Grant Field. 17th of July, they'll be in L.A. again at the Troubadour. July 22nd, Salt Lake City. No, no, no. What? 17th. 17th, you'll be in L.A. at the Troubadour. No, I believe it's no, the Palladium. Palladium. You got some false information there. Stupid. Show up naked again for stupid you managers. That. That's what do these guys do? That's like a five dollar fine in my book. <laughs> yeah, and it's ten for me. We're like the bank. You you just bounced a check. Uh so July twenty second, Salt Lake City, July twenty third, Denver, July thirtieth, Portland, and August first, they will be in Fresno at the fairgrounds uh for the KOME show, a station we're on over there. All right, we are going to play Counting Blue Cars. Anything you guys uh, want to say about that song before we get to it? Mm. Well, what made you write it? What made me write it? Kind of uh, sitting around questioning authority. It's kind of, a lot of people think it's kind of a religious song. It's not, it's not about God or anything like that. It's basically just about all the, all the brainwashing we get when, once we're, the moment we're born and just kind of questioning a lot of, uh, <clears throat> things that are kind of predetermined for you. The sure. stimuli of society and the exactly. impact it has on its youth. 
Exactly. <laughs> I that gotta, was beautiful. I got to start a band, man. All right. So, Dishwalla Counting Blue Cars. Counting Blue Cars from Dishwalla off of their CD, Pet Your Friends. And uh, George Pendergrass has just entered the studio. He Hello. is the uh, fourth but the third in studio of Dishwalla, who has actually uh, decided to uh, grace the Loveline Studios with his presence after circumnavigating yeah. the valley. I've seen all of L.A. Yes, you were lost. It's a tough place yeah. to find, but we're glad to have you. We're going to go back to the phones, and then we're going to talk to Dishwalla about some injuries they've had uh, on stage while uh, performing their uh, antics. Huh. So, Drew, maybe you can help out with those. But uh, first, let's get back to the phones. Melissa, 16, you're on Loveline with Dishwalla. Yeah. Um, I, this is probably going to sound like a really weird problem. All right, spit it out. But, okay, I'm going out with this guy right now. He's been going out for a couple weeks, almost a month. And he has a friend that they're pretty good friends. And we've gotten to know each other also. Well, he and his girlfriend came up with the idea of that us four all together should have a foursome. Now, I mean, this, I mean, this is not like... Not where we're all having sex together, but what they want to do is all of us be boyfriend and girlfriend. See, we get it on and we put it on speakerphone, and then yes. But I mean, like, it's not like I mean, it's really weird. Is because I mean, it wouldn't be where we're all having sex together, but it would be where we're all like we're all boyfriend and girlfriend. Like instead of just me going out with my boyfriend, I'd be going out with his friend, and I'd be going out with his friend's girlfriend. Uh huh. And we'd all be doing that. I mean, we, if we were walking around campus, we'd all be holding hands and stuff together. And but just what really, I don't know. It's just it really upsets me that he would ask me such a thing. Is your boyfriend asking you to do this? Yeah, my boyfriend asked me to do this, and he asked like first, like the first time I heard about it, he asked me to come over to his house, and he said it was like really important I meet somebody, and it turned out he wanted me to meet Nick's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Nick's girlfriend. And I already knew her. Uh, now, he, he's saying he, you don't need to have sex with either one of these people? I... But I, they, they, need to, they need to have a, like, a a four, like, a going steady group. Yeah, kind Rather of, than yeah. she's going out with the boyfriend, she's going out with the boyfriend, somebody else's girlfriend, and her boyfriend. Okay, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a foursome, it's a cult. It's Yeah, it's like, it's like a strange little ring of relationship. Yeah, well, that, and, like, if we were together and I just wanted to make out with my boyfriend, I couldn't, like, as soon as I was done making out with my boyfriend, I'd have to make out with his friend, and then I'd have to make out with his friend's What's girlfriend. your boyfriend's family life like? Huh? What's your boyfriend's family of origin like? They're, they're all pretty much, they're normal. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're no, there's no bisexual or... Lesbian or gay. He just wants to watch you make out with another girl. Yeah, and I told, and, I, and he asked me if the, if I was bisexual in any way, and I told him no, I wasn't. And so, I'm just what I'm afraid of is that I'm going to lose him. Oh, God forbid! You should lose your pimp. Oh. You've already lost him. He's a very <laughs> special pimp. The guy sounds like Cheers. a totally total weirdo. I don't know. Well, I mean, like we both really like each other. And no, 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 no. Listen, I don't think you understand what you're dealing with here. The, this this guy is in. He's into white slavery, Melissa. Let me let me tell you this whole like. Well, we're just all going to be in boyfriends and girlfriends, and we don't have to have sex is a way to sort of lure you into this foursome, and then you begin eventually doing what you do when you're boyfriend and girlfriend, which is having sex with everybody. There are certain boundaries that normal people perceive in relationships, yeah. and this guy's not not seeing those. Yeah, and then, like, today at school, they, um, his friend came up to me and said that um, there's a problem with it because I'm in the way, and he, his and his friend and his girlfriend are telling him to dump me. So they can go on with this, but he's fine. Like, yeah, get out of there. He doesn't want to dump me just for some little thing. He said, if you know, if he can't have me in in with it, he doesn't want to do it. But yet he's he's inter- he's kind of you know he wants to experiment, and like I'm just like I'm kind of I'm first of all it kind of makes me mad that he'd even ask me a question when I already told him I wasn't interested in this into this type of. You stuff. know what? We don't. I don't think we need to discuss this any further. This is something. You need to get away from as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, your boyfriend either is disturbed himself or is being sucked into this thing without considering your, having any consideration for your feelings. 
whatever well, the situation. He's just a horny teenager. All right, if that's who's what it is. Get that's, his kicks that's before fine. he goes to college. Be that as it may, Melissa obviously has more substantial feelings than than that and deserves better and needs to get out of this relationship. Get away from this guy. Yes, and it, it's okay to have your kicks when you're young, and and if you you know if these are things that you want to do, and you're all up for it, and it's your idea, or he brings it up, and you're you're uh, you're big thumbs up on it, then then that's fine. Do what you want to do. But if you don't want to do it, do not uh, fall prey to this uh, charlatan's trickery. He's peddling snake oil, I tell you, and he's going to rub it. Well, you know where he's going to put it. Phone number here for Loveline, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. We are here with J.R. Rodney and George, all from Dishwalla. And my uh, master and mentor, Dr. Drew. I am his uh, his uh, grateful sidekick, as uh, described in the, uh, what is that, cable and TV? <laughs> How many times I got to screw up the name of that rack? You're not going to get you're having some kind of emotional block. What is it? Uh, Television cable and broadcast. Oh, yeah. Anyway, they wrote a little article I was described as aspiring stand up and drew sidekick. You'll if never... anything, I want to be dominated. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse so me. Dishwalla is here. Dishwalla is uh, opening for, and I shouldn't say that because that's like not politically correct. But are you guys opening for uh, the Goo Goo Dolls? That is correct. You're playing first, and the Goo Goo Dolls are um, playing second. They decided they wanted to play after. They're us. cleaning up yeah. the stage after you guys are done tearing it up. <laughs> they're doing more of a post headlining thing, you know. <laughs> they're post headlining. The after dish Wallace show thing. I like that. Yeah. They're post dish. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And uh, they just released a uh, CD. Well, not just really. How long has it been? It came out in August. Oh, came out in August. Yeah, it's been a while. Because it's just like kind of exploding now, isn't it? I mean, or I'm just hearing a lot about it, a lot about Dishwalla. It just seems like in the last couple of weeks or months. I know you guys don't. You guys hear Dishwalla all day long. Yes, I know. It, I'm, it sounds like I'm painting myself in a corner, but but I'm going to be honest. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> My point is, is I've been hearing Dishwalla, the name Dishwalla, all over the place, especially like in the last two weeks. And I guess you guys have been making the rounds, but you've probably been making the rounds for the last nine months for some Maybe reason. Three months, actually, but I guess people are getting it now, I guess. I Everybody know. thinks it's a new album. That's fine with us. Right. So it's not just me. It's 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 sort of hitting now, it yeah, seems. It's hitting no, yeah. And that's yeah. fine. All right. Now that I'm done making an ass of myself, <laughs> we'll be back in 10. And as promised... Dishwalla has a medical question. Apparently, Jr. and Rodney uh, injured themselves That's doing promised. something on stage. Well, I was talking about it about ten minutes ago. That people, they people you wouldn't calling. let us talk about it. Yeah, we wanted well, to save it so we can embarrass ourselves on the air. Yeah, well, go ahead, guys. What happened to you? Well, um, in, in my case, uh, we were doing a show in Florida, and Jr. and I got a little pissed at each other and tackled each other on stage. Uh, forgot about my guitar. He landed on me, hurt really bad. He kicked his butt basically. I mean, uh, for the next. I'd say eight weeks. I could barely get out of bed. Mm. Anything resembling a sit-up, I, could, I couldn't even breathe. You broke your ribs. And I've broken ribs before. Yeah. I didn't think I did. I never went to a doctor, and all of a sudden I've got this big lump where and I never had one before. He's been hurting. Oh, all right. You're going <laughs> to lift your gonna shirt up? Out. Oh, Drew, you're going over there? No, he's coming over here. All righty. Wow, it's a quick, uh, it's the oh. first nipple check we've had here on Love Line since... Uh, Oh, yes, Drew. Drew would never do that to me, by the wow. way. That's what do you amazing. feel? We're getting fired up over here. <laughs> Your <laughs> nipple's getting hard, Rodney. There's something coming out of that nipple, Rodney. <laughs> no. Drew, what do you feel? Nothing Nothing worries in my life. It's fine now. <laughs> it, it, might be, it might be callus formation over a bone, a fracture. Yeah. Mm, that's got to hurt. Yeah, he was... Yeah. All right, so what happened? You're, you're, you, you got caught between... Um, the moon in New York City. <laughs> no, you had the guitar on, and you were tackling the guitar one into you? Well, yeah he, yeah. he ended up landing on me and pushed the Les Paul right into my ribs. I broke him. Now, were you really mm -hmm. pissed off, or is this uh, just sort of oh, it was just good showman clean American shit. fun, you know? Yeah. You know, it's like we'll be in the stage, we get bored, he'll hit me, and so then I'll hit him back harder, you know? And like, it, it escalates. Kids. Yeah, it escalated to and rib break. JR, you're, uh, you said your heel was hurt? <laughs> Yeah, I fractured my heel. That's from kicking Rodney in the groin while he was lying on the ground, <laughs> reeling with pain. Nice guy, yeah. exactly. Kick him when he's down. No, um, actually, I was, I think it was in Dallas, Fort Worth, somewhere. I was climbing up this huge lighting rig thing that they have, you know, over the top of the oh stage. Oh my God, you fell down. 
Well, I jumped out into the crowd, oh. and uh, right, and then <laughs> they had like twenty foot drop. There was a long drop. They have like these barriers that are between the the crowd and the stage mm-hmm. that the security people use. And I hit my to, foot to on keep it. you guys from banging teenagers, or okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Hi, mom. And you landed on so, you yeah, landed land, on I the land, stage or uh, somebody. My foot hit the uh, the top edge of the the barrier and did some serious damage. Did you Brody yeah. and fall backwards and make an ass of yourself? No, no. I can. I just played it off, pretend like everything was cool. No, <sighs> I mean, uh, it, with the adrenaline going and everything, I actually didn't really notice right off the bat, right. which is the weirdest thing. And but once I got back, well, after the show was over. My foot was swelling up pretty. It was badly, black and so. blue within a day. I mean, yeah, it was seriously nasty. black. Yeah, because I know what it's like when you get the adrenaline flux. One time I was uh, masturbating on the sofa, and you know I had my pants down. One and time I, I was all right, <laughs> one of the times, and I was sitting on a, a beer tab, you know, from old pull cam. The old pull cam. Yeah, and it was on my ass, <laughs> but I, you know, I was so charged up, with, you know, with the adrenaline that <laughs> I didn't even feel it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly all right, what happened. So I to know me. what it's like, guys. Oh, yeah. Leanne. Yes. You're 18. Yes. You're on with Dishwala. Hi. Um, I have a problem. I've been going with this guy for a year, and in the beginning, I was changing. I'm a recovering alcoholic, and I haven't touched alcohol in a long time, and I haven't smoked pot in a year and a half. And I told my boyfriend this, and I told him all about my past because my past is very vivid. And I wanted him to know uphand what he was dealing with. Well, because of my past, he doesn't like me talking to anyone in my past. And in, I have old boyfriends who are, like, really good friends. They turned out to be better friends than lovers. And I'm not allowed to talk to them because of my past. And I've tried explaining to him that no matter how much I love him, how much I'm going to be with him because we're engaged now, that I'm going, I'm not going to go back to what I was. And I'm the happy the way I am. But he just won't get it through his head, and it's gotten to the point where I had to change my phone number so these guys wouldn't call me. Are and they I people can't... that you did drugs with and partied with? Yeah. Then you should stay away from them. Well, I mean, no, the, the ex-boyfriend, like my one really good friend, Drew, Drew, I never did this stuff with him. Mm-hmm. And he only went out for like a couple of months. Older guy with a stethoscope? <laughs> but no, no, he wasn't. a handful of prescription <laughs> drugs? No, but it got to the point where I can't even talk to him. And it's gotten to the point where I have to, like, sneak around to call my friend. And, like, when he calls, he has to, like, star 67 so it doesn't show up on my caller ID. All right. Leanne, Sounds healthy. This is pretty weird. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's not your sobriety that he's so worried about. It's the fact that you had a physical relationship with these guys that he worries about. But, see, that's just it. It wasn't really physical. Was it I mean, really the, physical? No, the fight that this guy got with me was up my shirt for five minutes. I mean, it was we're better friends than lovers. And he has a girlfriend now. They've been together for two years, but I still can't talk to him without going around behind my boyfriend's back. And, and it's it's only your sobriety that he's worried about. That and the fact that I'm just totally, totally going to change and go back to what I am and that he's jealous. He's jealous that I'm going to run back to this guy, and I wasn't even in love with this guy. All right, that's, but that's, that's what it is. That That's what it is. It's the, it's the physical relationship you had with some of these guys and not your relationship with uh, the, the Paps bottle. You're dealing with serious male fragile ego here. Absolutely. You guys have been there, haven't you? Nah. Come Never. on. <laughs> how, old is, how old is this guy? He's 18. Uh, you're, it's the worst when you're 18. Yeah. I mean, yep. think, think yeah, back. I'm very, back very definitely when I was that age. I was very insecure at that point. Right. I mean, yeah. like I when, to deal with when you're 18, friends. 19, even like 21, 22, 23, remember going through the yearbook or going through like a photo album and seeing a picture of your girlfriend with her arm around some guy for like uh, homecoming or something? Total, total freak out. You total freak mm-hmm. out scene. Yeah. Now I'm 32. I walk in. Some guy's banging away on my girlfriend. Hey, how you doing? Great. I'll be in the I'll be in the bedroom. You don't care. Well, you know, you know, just a leave. So what's your address? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me see your ass. All right. <laughs> Leanne. Yes. This is a young, uh, this is a young thing. This has to do with uh, hormones and testosterone and that kind of stuff. And they're going to get married. Uh, it's it's not, it, I, I don't think there's any way to talk him out of this. It's yeah. just something that wears off, isn't it? Well, we hope. It, with me, yes. It will wear off. About 14 Rodney, years. Rodney, wore off with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. About a year ago. Yeah, we can all sort of, I mean, even, even Drew, even the uptight Drew will, will admit 
to, okay. to having these feelings at one time or another. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, here's another problem with it. My father is completely acceptable with my boyfriend's behavior towards this. And he totally agrees with my boyfriend and doesn't want me talking to anyone. And whenever this conflict arises, he sides with my boyfriend. I think in, in a kind of backwards way, this whole group is agreeing with your boyfriend. We are? I'm saying that it's age-appropriate stuff. Oh. And it's just it's the way it is for that age. And if you deal with them... You know, you, you, you have no choice. Cool, no, but, but they really have no choice. But understandable, but, right? Yeah, he he knows not it. what he does, and he can't help it at that age. He's just jealous, and it's going to be tough. Now, you know, you're you can still make the relationship work, and and you can get through it. And and your dad uh, jumping in into his camp is does not help any. Right. <laughs> but uh, you should definitely talk to your dad and tell him uh, this. He, he does not need to shovel any more coal into this guy's fire. You know what I mean, Leanne? Yes. All right, so talk to your dad first, and then, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I just lie to the boyfriend. You really have to save him from himself. Karsha. Hi. 19, you're on Love Line with Dishwalla. Oh, hi. Um, man, I finally got through. Um, I'm from New Zealand, and I'm over here for a year, and I'm, like, I don't know many people. And I just want to, like, know some places of where to go. And Dishwalla showed him on it. What? <laughs> Dishwalla at the Troubadour, man. <laughs> it's sold out. Actually, but they're... If you show up naked? You show up naked, you get it free, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be there nude, Karsha. Oh. Maybe we could go in together nude. <laughs> this Sorry. is a stupid question. I'm moving on. <laughs> Okay? <laughs> All right. We can't possibly. I, I, you know. You rule. You know what our problem is, is we try to answer all the questions. Yeah. Where do you meet guys? It's it, like Entertainment Weekly here. So. It, just go outside. You'll find a guy. Believe me. Go go anywhere. You'll find a guy. Patrick, 14. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'll be, like, friends with girls, and I'll want to, like, go out with them, but I don't know how to ask them, and, like, when I have asked them... Okay, another question we don't need. <laughs> How do you ask a girl? You just go go for the kamikaze. You just, you just do it. You don't want to make her feel uncomfortable, so don't stand there and stammer. Absolutely. Just telling them what you want. Carrie, 19, you're on Loveline with Dishwalla. Hey, that's me. Hey. Um. All right, I started taking uh, the triphasal birth control pills about two and a half weeks ago, and I just wanted to know how long it takes to, like, kick in. Like, when It's already kicked in. You're fine. I'm fine? Yeah. So I can... What's a try? It, three phases? It's, yeah, it's pretty good, Ed. Yeah, well, it's I know. Car is a deduction. That's really. <laughs> it, it's it's sort of tries to more naturally mimic the normal female cycling, and they've been around for probably a decade now. And uh, how they're, long they're very good. does it kick in? Uh, essentially, immediately, you're covered with those. Oh, cool. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Party on. <laughs> All right, Carrie. Thanks. Go out there and have unprotected sex. I will. With as many bikers as you can find. Okay? Try to pick up some veal on the way, too. All right. All righty. <laughs> some veal? Some veal. <laughs> We're being on PC here. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, pick up some um, some day laborers and uh, do, not, uh, do not report them, at least tax-wise. Guinea, 19. Guinea? Hey. Jenny. Jenny. Woo! <laughs> Ginny. I'm Italian. I can say what I want. <laughs> hey, Ginny. And indeed yes, you do. Ginny. Yes, you're on Love Line with Hi. Dishwalla. Um, my question's for Dr. Drew. Yeah. First, I just wanted to say that um, I met to, to Dr. Drew. I met you at, at Los Encinas, mm-hmm. and that you're a very nice man, and that you're very attractive. Ooh. Uh, that's a, a hot spring so here in the uh, L.A. area, for those of you who don't know what Los Encinas is. That's a hospital. That's a hospital I work at. Oh, okay. Yes, Jenny. <laughs> okay, and, and my question. Yeah. Um, a year ago, I was diagnosed as uh, manic depressive, right. but atypical manic depressive, right. and I've been having uh, illusions, hallucinations. Okay. I see things on my eyelids. Okay. Things appear to move. That's in spite of being on treatment for your your manic yeah, depression. Yeah, I'm on a lot of drugs. All right. Okay. And um, even an antipsychotic uh-huh. and. Um, my my psychiatrist doesn't know what's going on. He, I, I mean, he's a good psychiatrist, but he just he he's totally stumped by my. Um, Are you telling him everything? Yeah, I tell him everything. So, so he have you been doing drugs? Um, that's the thing. In the past, that year, 
Mm-hmm. Before I b- was diagnosed, I did a lot of nitrous oxide. Hmm. Oh, dear. And um, I also had an abnormal EEG. So you've had a neurologic workup, too? Yes, I've been mm-hmm. to the UCLA NPI mm-hmm. Center. Neuro- Neuropsychiatric yeah. Institute. Yeah, okay. and they just did a bunch of tests. Okay, and, okay. And no one, no one seems to know what's going on with me. Anything besides nitrous? Uh, no, I did ecstasy once. And that's it? And that's it. Uh... Boy, I, I'm not used to considering nitrous as something which is going to cause this sort of thing. God knows it possibly could, but it usually, if it's going to cause this sort of thing, it's very short-lived. Yeah. Like a few weeks duration. Uh, and the more significant problems I've seen with it have been in the peripheral nervous system, not so much yeah. you know, the brain issues. Yeah. So I, I doubt it's the nitrous, though God knows the nitrous certainly didn't, it didn't help what, uh, whatever underlying psychiatric problem that you have. Yeah. Uh, I would say just ha- stay with the psychiatrist, and I'm sure you'll find out with a combination of medication at least helps you. Another thing is um, most of the time the hallucinations happen are when I have overdosed on uh, different medications. Well, and, but that that would be a side effect then, and that's sort of normal to have side effects. Uh, but usually like days later. Mm, that can be side effect too. Like this, really? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, from what, from what um, my doctor has told me that um, – these are un- unlike any. He's the hallucinations aren't typical aren't typical of anything. Yeah. What he's seen. Jenny, I would just stay with the team that's treating you, and uh, it sounds like they're on top of things, and, and stay with it. Please. And uh, don't operate any farm equipment until this whole thing gets uh, cleared up. Drew, you got a phone call? I do. Oh, you're right on top of things. Allison, twenty, you're on Love Line with Dishwalla. Hi. Um, I've been engaged to this guy for about six months. We've been dating for about two years, and um. Recently, in about February, I slept with another guy, and he doesn't know, and I don't know if I should tell him. Didn't we have this call last night? Yeah, and the night before. And the no, night no, we... but particularly this this sabotaging of near marriage experiences. Yes, we yeah. had this exact call. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Except for she was, oh, no, 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 last night she had a crush on the guy's brother. Right, right, the you're right. Obsession with the guy's you're brother. You're right, that's right. She was actually obsessing so much that I actually started to have feelings <laughs> for the guy's brother. Allison? <laughs> Now, why why do you feel, in your own words, and of course we'll correct your own words in a minute, but tell us first why you slept with this guy on, yeah. on the verge of being married to your fiancé. Well, I live in L.A. right now, and he lives up north. Oh, well, he's up north. Okay. But I'm going to be moving there July 1st. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How old is he, your fiancé? He's 21. Yeah. Uh-huh. 20. And so you slept uh, with this other guy because we it's a just, toll we call to like, call your total, boyfriend. It was a total platonic relationship at first. And it just kind of evolved into something more. Oh, okay. Is it still something more? or is? Um, I'm trying to end it, but he's having a hard time dealing with me moving. The new guy? Yeah. Right. And when is the, um, do you have a date for the marriage? Not yet. Uh-huh. I want to finish college first. Have you, have you picked out any colors? Huh? Picked out a color scheme? No, not yet. Okay. Where are you registered? Um, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Must you get married? Um, no. Do you no. really want to get married? Like I said, I want to finish school. But, but you want to? I mean, in the even in the near term. Yeah, like um, in about two or three years, I do. Or so. Did you yeah. guys? Did you guys talk about getting married because uh, he moved away? Or no, not at all. So he's really not your fiance, is he? Yeah, he is. But why don't you wait two or three years and talk about it again? Right. Yeah. Do you think I should tell him though? Because he has no idea. Yeah, tell him you slept with someone. No. Well, oh, wait a minute. No, <laughs> no, no, no. What George is getting at is that is that uh, this 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 will cure the the premarital affliction they're having. You know, this this preoccupation with getting married someday. Uh, and the reality needs to become to bear here. That that sounds like Allison wants to have other relationships. Well, just because your voice cracked, <laughs> <laughs> Allison wants to have another relationship. <laughs> Allison. Yeah. Allison, you don't want to get married, so you sort of sabotaged whatever it is. We were talking about this uh, last night. Like so far right. Away, you know? Yes, that's right. I don't. I think it's even sabotage. She just she just wants that's, to see other guys. All right. Yeah, so tell me, you want to see other guys? Yeah. And stop. Even though I'm moving up there. In like hey, you've done it. A couple weeks. Mm. All you, right. D- lie to him if you're moving up there. Are you moving in with him? No, not with him. I lie anyway. I'm sticking to my lie thing, George. I'm sorry. <laughs> you right. must lie. Believe me, and he'll have, uh, hopefully, has the uh, courtesy and the good sense to lie to you about the multiple ap- uh, affairs that he's been having while you've been down here in L.A. All yeah, right, it's, Allison? It's, it's, you're All as right. sick as your secrets. Just keep that in mind. Really? Really. 
I hate that. Heidi, 30, you're on Loveline with Dishwalla. Hi. Hi, Adam. Hey. I have a bone to pick with you. All right. You're the one I described earlier today, earlier in the show, the fan that you met, the crazy fan. Oh, uh, you're the... I appreciate that. <laughs> you're the one in Santa Barbara? Yes. No way. Really? Yes. 30? Yes. Really? All right, well, yeah, describe yourself for the Loveline well, uh, listeners and and Dishwalla. Go ahead. Uh, we no. might know her. No. <laughs> Do you know? Sure, it's a small town. Do you know Dishwalla? What is the name of that um, that uh, secondhand store that's underneath KJE? Oh, it's Goodwill. Okay. Yes. Hey, well, she's yeah. for real. And you were hanging out, waiting for me to, yeah. to leave the studio, yeah. right? And was I friendly? Yeah. Or was I polite? You're polite. Did I sign your breast? Yeah. I did. What? No. <laughs> Do you really have a mustache and only one tooth? No. Uh, no. You got like three teeth and half a mustache, don't no. you? <laughs> but Heidi. Yeah. Do you live? Do you have a home? Do you live? Do you <laughs> live? Yeah. Do you live somewhere? No, you don't live at the fig tree, yeah, no, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you have a home. Yes. Everything's going well. Yeah. Oh, we come from the same neighborhood, right? Yeah. Remember, I was asking you about uh, you went to the same high school and junior high. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. All right, Heidi. Oh. You know, this is radio. We hyperbole. We, uh, hyperbole. That's right. I used uh, dr- uh, dramatic and artistic license okay. to describe well, I just, you. Uh, didn't like that. All right. I'm sorry, Heidi. Oh, okay. Heidi. Uh, yeah. Do me quick favor. Turn the radio off. I want to talk about you just a little bit more before we go to break. <laughs> but the radio is off. Okay. You, do you do you have a gun? No. Okay. And no, no transportation? No. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi's a mad woman. <laughs> There's one person waiting for me to leave the studio. Now, there were, I, I gotta be fair to the uh, Santa Barbarans. There was a couple of uh, teenage kids waiting for me when I showed up at the station about 6 a.m. But at about 10 a.m. when I, when I, you know, and I put my sunglasses on and gave my big pose at the top of the stairs. And there's uh, Heidi pushing a shopping cart with the old uh, Van Heusen shirt she'd been trying on down at the, uh... yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, she's uh, you. You guys would know her if you saw. Her. All right, we'll be back with more uh, dishwall and more uh, crazy stalkers after this. We're Rancid, and you're listening to Love Line. So give me all your loving. Come on, baby, show me what you got. <laughs> yes, lovely Lars from Rancid was uh, in here a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, about, yeah, about a month the, ago. About there, a couple weeks ago. Rancid, sure, yeah. uh, we already have signed up for the uh, house band for Boobville. Oh, that's right. A uh, mythical place that uh, I'm going to buy some land in Montana. I'm going to, you know, much like, uh, you know, Walt Disney had a dream, Martin Luther had a dream, I have a dream. It's called Boobville. Have you picked the, the land where it's going to be part of the country? Uh, no, it'll be in the country. It'll, yeah, uh, but it's going to be like Montana. It's gonna I'm be not buying much. downtown Montana, leveling it and erecting Boobville. I'm going to buy some big field somewhere. Where? Where boobs mm-hmm. grow? Who cares? Somewhere you, in Montana you, where nothing's Montana, going on. Montana, that's what I said. He wants you, to farm sheep. What are you doing with that Clamato? I'm shaking the Clamato because I've decided. Now, those of you who uh, who tuned in recently and did not hear the opening yeah, of the show. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, we do no. not use cups. We <laughs> sip from the ceremonious <laughs> Clamato. <laughs> The holy Clamato 16 ounce. Wait, what are we going to do? Taste this thing? All right, here's the deal. I have I have talked about Clamato for many a month. Many a year. I many think. a year. Absolutely. Are there clams in it? Is what I want to know. Yes, there is clam juice. It's toward the bottom. It's um, no, it's not on there. No, yes, 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 oh, yes. yes it is. Yes, it's uh, garlic powder, spices. Uh, th- I'm starting way down the ingredient list. By the way, a uh, dried clam broth. Mm-mm. What seems to be a little bit of a like an Delectable oxymoron treat. there. <laughs> Dried broth. Sounds kind of weird. I mean, <laughs> clam broth. I'm trying to I burnt myself with some dried clam broth. Cool. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's right before uh, red dye number 40 in vinegar. Now, the point is, is I've been talking about this, uh, this uh, American phenomenon called uh, Clamato and Beef Motto for many a month and many a year. Drew, on a whim, picked me up a 16 ounce of Clamato. Many people did not uh, know that this actually existed. That they would they take included the, myself. The two worst taste known to man that could be harnessed by the way tomato fish juice and tomatoes and fish <laughs> and put them together and made a beverage out of them oh yes they're put running a little vodka you're fine they're running ads on tv <laughs> it, it looks so good though you look at the label and you're, yeah, now, now, you're gonna make everybody in the room all right taste now wait a minute video. let's listen ah <sighs> The Clamato's what's that, what's that now smell? Open. You know what? <laughs> that, uh, that was Anne, by the way. Should we, like, shower? Clamato. It's like some ceremonial bathing. Yeah, we so everyone through. get nude. 
Except for me. You know what? I'll take right, no, 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 we don't Adam, use no, cups. Adam, come on. Please, Drew, stop being such a puss. Now, we're all going to take a <laughs> he's, sip. He's a doctor, and he's in here with a band. He wants a cup. <laughs> <We're> all, <laughs> yeah, that I swig first. God knows what you go. He's got a six-pack of penicillin. I swig first. Right, right. Let me give you, seriously, a quick lip check, guys. Let me look around. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, everything looks good. Everything's on the up and up. Now, I'll take the first swig. I will let the pussy Drew take the first swig. <laughs> go ahead, Drew. Sip off the... Uh, <laughs> Sip off the sacred the, clamato. Uh, you can jar. plug your nose if you the want. The bouquet uh, overcomes me. Yeah, well, you have to let it uh, air, aerate a little. Okay. <laughs> Just right. mix it with a shot of vodka. Drew, did you get a sip? All right. Yeah, so, uh, guys from the Schwab. What's with the sphincter face he's making right now? <laughs> this is normal push. You guys want to, <laughs> do you want to smell the cap? No. no. Nothing. Okay. I, I will take the second sip. Smell the cap. Uh, as a matter of fact, I will show my, my Wavo size by handing it to the end. George down at the end there, who will take a uh, sip off the uh, Clamato. Really? I'll take it from a cup. <clears throat> now, no, absolutely not. No, Rodney, go ahead. He's taking a sip off the Clamato. Yes. Let it oh. breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And now finally, JR. Oh, look at that. He's a man. All Zesty. right. And now wow. you're a humble host. Wow. Check out that aftertaste. You okay, really now we we are brethren. That. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, it's not that bad. It tastes right. like those Come chicken on. and the biscuit crackers. We are now bound by the uh, by the uh, Clamato jar, right, Drew? Are we are yeah. Clamato brothers. Yes, forever. <laughs> and it was good. And uh, tomorrow yes. night, when uh, David Spade comes in here, you bring the beef motto, <laughs> and we will bond over beef. I don't know if I can find that. All right, Drew, you got a call picked down? You liked that, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, Who absolutely. That? Who was that? Who likes that? Dominique, 23, old people. It moves the bowels. <laughs> Dominique, 23, you're on Love Line with Dishwala. <laughs> yes, my question is for Dr. Drew. Yes, my um, I had, My boyfriend pressured me into sleeping with him for the first time. Uh-huh. And when I did, afterwards, I found out that he had tried to go with my sister and my mother. Whoa. You know, over the telephone when I wasn't home. Wow. Sounds like um, the graduate. <laughs> We'd been arguing, and he called me all kinds of names and stuff. And when I found out that I didn't have my period and I might be pregnant, uh, and I told him, he punched me in the stomach and said, well, not no more. And I wanted to know if creepy. I am, will that hurt me at all? Or uh, well, He busted my lip, too. But this guy's What's his name? Asshole. I want to kick his ass personally. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a this guy's, real, real guy's jerk. Definitely. A criminal. Could it do something to me? Yeah, because yeah. he hit me in the stomach I and mean, in my face? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, you obviously survived the, the initial incident. Well, she wants to know, could it do anything to her child? Yes, it could. Well, I mean, how far along were you, Dominique? Uh, about a month and a half. I but haven't you, had my period, so. You, but you haven't started bleeding or anything no. like that since this thing. So I it just sounds had a stomachache afterwards. Yeah, it sounds as though you made it okay without any significant consequence. Time will tell. Well, Drew, if... When is it more dangerous? I'm guessing it's later on. Later would be more dangerous for that sort of thing. Okay. Dominique. Yes. All right. Well, let me backtrack for a second here. How did you find out over the phone that he was making a play for your sister and your mom? He had took me to a motel and we came home, right? And <laughs> Class individual. I oh. came in that. I came and I started to get out of his truck and my brother-in-law came up and just started beating him up. And I asked him what, you know, what's going on? And he's like, well, because it's my sister's husband. And he's like, well... He tried going with my wife, and, you know, he was talking to your mother and saying how he wanted to sleep with them and stuff. That's how how old are you? About. 23. And how old was he? 29. Just chalk this up to experience, and I hope to I hope to how you don't get involved with people like this ever again. This guy is a freak. Yeah, this is, this is a criminal. This is a bad person. This is somebody you should not have anywhere near you or your child. Is there anything I can do to keep him away from me? Because he yeah, get a restraining order. Come into my house and stuff, keep, and trying to get me to keep, talk to him. Keep and, reporting to the police. When I done. call him on the phone, he hangs up. You don't, know, don't call. Yeah, end don't all don't contact. Call. Get restraining orders. Just end all. Okay. Contact. You must, Dominique. Listen, when he calls you, do not argue with him. Just hang up. It. Just give him nothing, zero, and eventually, stupid people get um, distracted by other things. He'll find another victim, and he'll move on. You know what I mean? He he likes conflict. So don't call him up and, you know, when he calls, don't call him, but if he calls you, don't start arguing with him or anything. He just If you hear uh, someone that sounds like him breathing on the other line, just hang up immediately. 
and get a restraining order. But what if I'm pregnant and now my child won't have a dad? It better I grew up without a dad. Line. Look, it's terrible. This is not the dad that <laughs> you want for any any child. Believe me. He'll abuse the child. He abuses you. Yeah, this is, this is yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Much what, better. He should have no child than this guy. Yeah, it's like no, a, no, no father. It's like Manson's wife calling yeah. up. Hey, yeah. Huh? yeah. But what about Charlie? He's yeah. got to help rear the kid. Right. Yes. Yeah, better. Uh, I mean, um, it's a lesser degree of evil, I guess. Or I don't want to call it evil, but it, it's 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 the question of where you worse off: no dad, or you know. Uh, or criminal. Yeah, or dad that abuses the hell out of you. I'm, I'm and, guessing uh, this guy's one of these guys with uh, two or three first names, too, like uh, Billy Joe Bob or something like that. Billy Ray. I wonder uh, where this guy grew up and what happened to him. Right, right. That's right. Something, something horrible. Something and I'll just bet anything it was in Santa Barbara <laughs> or any of the outlying areas. Because you kids are just too damn nice. Are you saying we're wimps, man? No, I'm no, no. No, you could punch me in the stomach, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sure you beat the crap out of women all the time. So I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, it just sounded to me like, uh, somewhere, somewhere in one of the, uh, parking lot states uh, toward the middle there. Carol, 23, you're on Loveline. Hi, I think my question is probably most appropriate for Dr. Drew, but Adam, I love you, so feel free to jump in here at any time. Okay. What okay. about us? What about the guys from Dishwalla, though? We're experts. <laughs> sure, all of you. Um, actually, I was dating this guy for a long time, and then we broke up. He broke up with me, and so I started dating another guy, and I slept with him, and then I got back together with this, the original boyfriend, and he asked me if I slept with anyone, and I said no, because I really would like for it to work out. But the problem is, uh, size difference, and I can tell the difference, and I'm just wondering if if he can tell the difference. He has a small we, car. What? what, is, what are I you think you know about? what I mean. Oh, what a night! No, okay, wait a minute. Wait <laughs> All right, this is getting good here. This is getting good. Guys, dig in, because this is going to be a good one. Carol, the size issue. It yes. Is your boyfriend the guy you broke up with? He broke up with me. All right, whatever. Okay. Is his penis smaller than average, or was the guy you slept with just have a, like a King Kong schlong? I don't have a lot of reference to refer to. Six, six inches is average. Uh, 5.1, smartass. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Drew, get the documentation. <laughs> I, but I would guess that the other guys may be larger than usual. I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't have like a large frame of reference, so uh -huh. I don't really But you know. basically Rodney? want... <laughs> Rodney? What? How you hung? <laughs> You want? To, are you the before or the after? What uh, is Rodney hung? No comment, man. Okay, we're not interviewing here. <laughs> okay, so you went from like a chapstick to a. <laughs> Why butt not? Can, How big's right? your dick, Rodney? Come on, <laughs> Rodney. Well, this is pretty serious because I mean I don't want you to keep know. lying if if I think that he knows and if he knows I just want to tell him the truth and get it out in the open because this is something I really want to work out. All right, so so you're gonna have this conversation with him, honey. I'm really sorry no, that I'm so. Have I would I would like to keep lying and just pretend, but if he's gonna know, then I'd rather get it out in the well, open. Well, how's he? He's not. Not gonna know no, that way. Gonna know, That's so why I'm asking Dr. Drew because I can definitely tell. There's really? Not... Yeah, but she, I think it's just more of a memory thing. I, there's no way that he could tell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So unless he hears this show, he's not gonna know. <laughs> no, no, he's not. The, the woman's vagina is not like taffy. It it uh, it it springs back. Am I right, Drew? Absolutely. Yes. It's, it's, designed, for a, a, it's designed for a baby's head to move through there and <laughs> still spring back. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's where they come from. Carol. Yes. Is your mouth stretched out? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, yeah. Hey, we got this song called uh, Charlie Brown's Parents that we're going to be playing soon. You guys want to uh, formulate any thoughts about that song, how it was written, uh, what it was written about? It's a very interesting title, Dishwalla. Anything uh, you guys want to say about that? <laughs> this never works. It never works. Uh, because Charlie's Charlie Brown's parents were always that wah, 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 You never wah. understand yeah. what they're saying, right? I think their mouths right. are stretched out. And, yeah. <laughs> and the school, the school teacher on Charlie Brown was the same thing, right? Uh, any yeah. adult, I guess. Yeah. So, exactly. All right. Please. It's not 20 questions. But this is actually specifically towards adults, though. Right. Yeah. All right. You guys don't consider yourself adults? No. No? Well, no. Chronologically, you are, but emotionally, you're 13? Yeah. Well, okay. 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hate to be insulted, Just... but I had to get an answer. Yeah. Okay. Don't hit me. I don't know. I'm going to three no, you, and no. God forbid, Drew would run if I, no. you guys <laughs> knock me down and kick the life out of me, and Drew would be up on the table like he saw a mouse. All right. <laughs> So when we come back, 
We're going to hear uh, Charlie Brown's parents from Dishwalla. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. Had a little brain freeze there. We're here with uh, Dr. Drew, Adam Carolla, and Dishwalla, J.R. Rodney and George. They have a CD out. It's called Pet Your Friends. They have a song on the CD called Charlie Brown's Parents. And let's give it a listen, shall we? Oh, man, of that rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Especially that one part. Yeah, the part we, um, you know, well, you know. Whoever yeah, the, the drummer in the group was, was really banging on the drums, and then the guy was on the guitar, was on the guitar, and it was like, man. Yeah, same. 1-800-LOVE-191. <laughs> Facts number 310-854-4455. We're here with Dishwalla. Scotty, the uh, bashful member of Dishwalla came into the studio to uh, talk to the boys and cut what we call a liner in here for the other radio stations and our own. And um, I made him partake of the Clamato. And he was uh, man oh, enough to take a swill off of it. So um, He smelled it first, though. He did. <laughs> big mistake. <laughs> I think it's a big mistake. Yeah. He smelled a little dried Adam on the uh, end of the bathroom. <laughs> Scotty, you, you all right? <laughs> all right, but we are here with Jared, Rodney, and George Dishwalla. They have a CD called Pet Your Friends. It has been out for a while, and I suggest you go get it if you already haven't already. And uh, if you have already, we'll get another one and give it to a friend. Stephanie, 14, you're on Loveline with Dishwalla. Okay, um, Dishwalla? Hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> do any of you guys have girlfriends? Uh, a couple of us do. Oh, because me and my sister... Yeah. Santa, she's 20. Uh, yeah. We like you guys a lot. Yeah? What's Zang your point? <laughs> Zang Zang it on. What's that? Hello. This is my sister, Susanna, and she's 20, and we like you guys a lot. She sounds really hot. <laughs> well, she's going to be a model. Oh, really? Yeah, she um, she's going to be a model. I'm serious. Yeah. Right. I only date brunettes, though. Hey, you guys, um, when do you think you'll be coming to the Bay Area? Um, We're going to be up Friday. Really? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, wait. Let, let, Stephanie. Don't have a freak out here. It's cool. Let me talk to the ladies for a second, guys. Let, let, let me do your bidding for a second. I will be the... Uh, He's our pimp. I will be your pimp, yes. <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah? You know what? You, all right. Settle. Settle, baby. Okay. Your uh, sister's name is Susanna? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hi. Budding model, Susanna? Yeah. Uh-huh. Tall, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the weight doesn't show as much when you're tall. <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah. All right, let me let me explain something about uh you you've seen uh, pictures of uh the group? Yeah, I think they're all really cute. They are foxy. Do you you have yeah. one you you like no. the most? Huh? You have one you like the most? No, I like all of them the same, which right. is really weird because I usually just have one favorite, but all right. of them are so cute. It's right. Kinda, it's kind of like the monkeys. Cute. Right. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Davy was the kid. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Now, now I got to explain you know something him, to you, ladies. These guys are in a rock band. This yeah. is this is nothing new to them. <laughs> Your parents would hate. Well, this. I don't want a relationship. <laughs> Whoa. What do you want? Oh, oh Lord, Stephanie. She, she wants a paternity suit. It's what she wants. <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah. Stephanie. Now you're 14. Uh huh. That's a little bit young to be uh, giving away your your virtue to a smelly, hardworking, sweaty rock and roll band, isn't it? <laughs> but they're cute. All right. Yeah, I, I think they're cute too. I'm not blowing them. Not yet. <laughs> not till after the show. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have any money, man. I'm serious. Stephanie. Yeah. Let's talk to Susanna because she's of age. Okay. All right, and she's gonna be a model. <laughs> <laughs> Susanna? Yeah. Now, wait a minute. I was going to be a model when I was 22, but I, I decided to stay in the carpet cleaning business. So tell me, uh, what are you planning on doing about being a model? Um, well, as soon as I get up some money to save up for pictures and stuff, I'm going to do it. Okay. All right. So you're not really a model. Yeah, I'm a dental assistant right now. Mm hmm. So you, you, you model uh, floss and tongue depressors and things like that. <laughs> Not quite. Will you be at the Dishwalla show? I wish. No. Why? Sold out. No. Um, nah. No. You can find tickets. <laughs> Can't you use some of that uh, sex that you're using on Dishwalla, Dishwalla at this point to go out and uh, wrestle up a couple of tickets for you and your kid sister? <laughs> yes, Vanna. 
Is that right. it? You can barter dental. All right, go to the go to the concert, and I want you two to have shirts made up. <laughs> I want one to say Suzanne, dental assistant. Yeah, Suzanne, you can make shirts. And one Ooh. to say uh, Stephanie, uh, uh, underage student. <laughs> All right. And make sure they're yellow, and put the make the lettering in big, bright, uh, bold face lettering, and jump up and down so they can see you. Oh, okay. Friday's the day. All right, and uh, Susanna, uh, bring one of those lead smocks in case you know things get out of hand. I love those things. Yeah, they they, they, uh, they work. They rock my world. The lead smocks. Now, do you guys get a lot of this? A lot of women? A lot of shows? A lot of jumping Actually, up and down? We get a lot of dental assistants. It's amazing. I don't know. <laughs> we have great teeth, I guess. Amazing hygiene. You guys are a good-looking band. And, you know, usually there's, like, one good-looking guy and then, like, three fat guys. But <laughs> you guys are, like, all fat guys, which is kind of... No, I'm just just kidding with the guys. You're all good-looking. And, and you know, what's I'm, your point? I mean, that in a very heterosexual way. Well, thanks, Adam. I'm just saying, usually, you know, there's kind of the, the front man, the good-looking guy, and then, you know, they got the ugly guy, you know, back playing the drums or something. But <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you guys are all studs. And, you know, I mean that. And like I said, in a very masculine way. Drew, back me up. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Drew was checking us out earlier. I don't know. I, I couldn't He's get feeling my boobs. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little more an examination, wasn't it? All right. When we come back, we will wrap down and wrap up with Dishwalla. Okay, back on Love Line with Dishwalla. Remember, kids, tomorrow night, David Spade will be in studio. We'll have a good time with him and maybe uh, get him to sip off the uh, ceremonial beef motto. <laughs> Earn, yes. All right, let's uh, real quick talk to uh, Elliot, 19. Make it fast, Elliot. All right. Uh, well, it's a little problem I have. Uh, I uh, have a girl, well, Kinda had a girlfriend. All right, too long. <laughs> Break up with her. I said, make it fast. <laughs> I said, Elliot, make it fast, and he starts out. Well, uh, it's like Andy Griffith sitting down, getting ready to tell a song. And uh, my grandpa taught me this, and it goes a little something. It's like just spit out the freaking question. All right, we're out of time. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. I want to thank Dishwalla for coming in here. Hey, thanks, you guys. Tonight, and being cool and being fun and making me feel at ease. A lot, a lot of times the rock bands come in here, they have a little edge, a little attitude, and, and things get a little the road, uncomfortable. The road can do that. I, I understand it, but, you know, you know it's like, right, I'm not with them. Like doing a bunch of blow and banging a bunch of groupies, and you get a little edge. Sure. But not you guys. Obviously, the blow and the, and the hookers have not affected you guys. You're still the old dishwalla we knew when we left you in Santa Barbara. It was our Santa Barbara upbringing, I think. Yes, a very, a very good the upbringing, I might still add. a little impaired, though. They drank from the Clamato jar. <laughs> yes, and uh, Rodney's been belching up the Clamato <laughs> Jar. George is not appreciating this. Since no. he's, uh, since he took a swill off of it. Well, we're out of time. So anyway, go out and get that, uh, CD, Pet Your Friends from Dishwalla. Guys, thanks for coming in. Drew, thank you for coming in and let me, uh, do my little part on the show. I know I'm just your sidekick. Remember David Spade tomorrow night and we'll talk to you then. You've been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.